Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. Hey, a, uh, a shout out to, of course, drone enthusiasts everywhere. And uh, as always, uh, my friends at the Drone Seekers, I want to give a special shout out. I've got a list of people I want to shout out to that uh, have been doing a lot for the drone community. Uh, so I just want to make sure that we, uh, that we call them all out. Uh, you know, I always call out the Drone Seekers, and if you haven't checked them out, you need to do it. Uh, it's a great group. Uh, their YouTube uh, page has, has kind of stalled a little bit. I think they're still under 500 subscribers. It's run by Sean Matthews. In, uh, he's over in Spain. He's a British expat. I can't say enough about that group. It's one of the friendliest drone groups you'll ever find. They're, 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 you can find them on Facebook under Drone Seekers and then look up the uh, YouTube channel as well. The YouTube channel especially needs a little love. Hey, log on there, subscribe to that channel and uh, you're going to get in with a group of like-minded drone flyers that I think you'll really enjoy. Quite frankly, an international group, drone flyers from all around the world. So, uh, so it's well worth your time to look at that. I also, I, I want to shout out uh, uh, my friend Ron Brown. He's my partner on uh, Zeno Nation. Uh, man, just an all-around good guy. He is also on uh, Rotor Talk Live with uh, Bill Haraz, Bill the Drone Reviewer. And, and uh, I count uh, Ron and Bill as a couple of real good friends of mine. Even though I've never met them, they live on the other side of the country. We've gotten to know each other real well. And I enjoy being a guest on Rotor Talk Live and uh, and being part of Xeno Nation with Ron Brown. So you want to check out uh, both of those channels. The other uh, thing, just right before I got here today, I was looking at some videos and I looked at, at uh, Duranify Al Duran. He's over in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, boy, he just does some great work with the Hubson Xeno and the Femi X8 SE. Uh, check out his latest video. Uh, he gives a pretty good narration uh, about the, where he flies in the uh, Richmond area and I don't think he's over a thousand subs yet and I'll be honest with you I don't know why he, he's, it's really a great YouTube channel and he does a lot of uh, a lot of good work over there so check him out uh, another guy we're gonna fly the uh, the Paradinafi today so I've got to call out Ethan Mitchell Ethan Mitchell does more for the Anafi community than I think anybody. Uh, man, Parrot ought to put him on the payroll. Ethan is a real pro. And if you want to know about this particular uh, bird, he, it's his channel that you need to check out. Uh, you know, guys like me are just hacks compared to him. I fly these drones and mess around with him. He's a guy that really knows what he's doing. And I learn something every time I talk to him and every time I look at one of his videos. So, so check that out. So, so that's about it for the, uh, for the shout outs. Lots of other people obviously, but we'll, we'll get to them another time. Uh, so we're going to fly the Anafi today. I just posted a video, uh, today as a matter of fact flying the the Anafi uh, over by the Red Rock Canyon in Las Vegas I had some issues with it with uh, uh, you know I, I think in the video I said it was the gimbal as it was I had it in sport mode and it was jigging around quite a bit uh, you know when I think about it the gimbal doesn't turn like this so it, so it had to be the probably the drone pitching around in the wind this is a very lightweight drone so I suspect that's probably what the issue was. It was the the, the drone itself getting tossed about in the wind. Uh, but uh, I've also had other issues with this particular drone. Uh, I'll show you some video uh, that I took on that recent vacation I was out by, and I wrote it down here so I could tell you. We, we went into uh, uh, the south rim of the Grand Canyon, but before you get there, there's a little town called uh, between Williams and Tucson uh, is the little town that kind of everybody stays at before they go in the canyon and, and Sarah and I were no exception. But about probably 13 miles before we got into Tucson we found a, a Forest Service Road 320 that was right by the Red Butte Mountain and we went out there and, and just drove the car kind of out off-road even a little bit in the boondocks. It was a trail but I mean it was a, it was a, a fire road. Uh, but uh, we took the, uh, the, the Paradinafi up 
and there was a little bit of wind. It wasn't like crazy windy like it was by the Red Rock Canyon when we were in Las Vegas. And I had some issues with this guy. When it's in sport mode, it pitches around quite a bit. And I expect that. The, the, the spark does it too. But it seems to me that this was doing it more than it should have. And it was really difficult to get some smooth video. And while it was windy that day, it wasn't all that windy. So I'm just trying to get that figured out. Uh, and, and then also, uh, uh, just about probably a month ago, uh, I, a buddy of mine and I took a motorcycle trip and we went almost to Stanley, Idaho on Highway 21 and we stopped at a place uh, called the uh, Vader Creek Rest Stop. You can look that up on Google and uh, uh, you'll, you'll find it on Google Maps. It's about 14 miles or so from, from Stanley, Idaho. And uh, took this little guy up, and I had some, some of the same issues with it. Boy, every once in a while it would just pitch one way or another. And, th and I, that was in sport mode, so you can expect some of that. I don't think that it should always be smooth while it's in sport mode. Just like the DJI Spark, same way. Uh, but it seemed excessive, and even in RTH, Return to Home, I was getting some of that. So. I, th I think there's a possibility. I bought this as a refurb on Amazon, and and I'm wondering if mine may be a bad one, that I might have some weak motors or some ESCs or something. I've had a couple of little other little issues with this guy with regard to uh, one time I was landing and I had difficulty disarming the motors, and I literally had to, to uh, turn off the power button on it to get it to shut down. Now, a lot of people told me, and I think correctly so, that I could have hit the landing button again on the, on the app and it probably would have shut it down, but in the moment, I, I didn't think of that. But the other issue that I've had consistently with this guy is that sometimes it will not turn off. Uh, I've literally had to remove the battery to shut down the drone. Uh, you know, short press, long press, short press, then a long press, tried everything, and it just, it just wouldn't shut down and like I said so I've had a few of those issues so you know I'm, I'm just not sure and uh, I, so I may I, I bought this on Amazon and thank goodness for Amazon's excellent return policy I may return this one but I love the Anafi so I so I want one uh, and what I'll probably do then is buy another one but instead of buying a refurb I'll just probably buy a new one because this is a drone that I definitely want in my arsenal. It takes phenomenal video and like I said I'm not going to say definitively because I, I don't really know. I'd like to hear others experience with it. Uh, it may just be, it, it could be the way I'm flying I, for all I know. But anyway that brings me to what we're going to do today. I'm, gonna, I'm at Heroes Park in Meridian. I'm back home. I'm gonna, and there's literally no, very little to no wind today. I'm gonna take it up and I'm gonna put it in sport mode and fly it out and, and see how it performs. Uh, you know, and if it does okay and I feel better about it, maybe I'll just hang on to this one. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, that's the kind of point of this video. So anyway, right now I'm gonna show you both the video that I took in, in Arizona by, uh, by the, uh, uh, Red Butte Mountain uh, and then I'm also going to show you the video that I took uh, on the motorcycle trip uh, that you'll see the Sawtooth Mountains in the in the distance it's some pretty uh, pretty cool uh, video over by Stanley Idaho off of Highway 21 at the Vader Creek uh, rest stop so uh, anyway I'm gonna roll that right now and then after that uh, you'll see today's flight. We're going to throw it up in sport mode and fly it around and and like I said I don't expect it to be perfectly smooth in sport mode. You're going to get little jinks and jags just like you do with the with the DJI uh, Spark with the two axis gimbal. But I, I don't expect it to have just those huge wiggles and stuff like I've seen on some of my other videos with it. So let's throw it up in the air and, uh, and we'll see what we can find. This video was taken with the Anafi while on a motorcycle ride with my neighbor. Uh, we took a ride out towards Stanley, Idaho, 
and we stopped at a rest stop about 14 miles east of Stanley and put the Anafi up in the air and uh, got some pictures of the Sawtooth Mountains. Those are the Sawtooths you see off in the distance there. Uh, and it's pretty smooth at this point. I had it in sport mode, but you'll see here in a second uh, some baubles that uh, show up in the video. I did a slow pan here so that you could kind of see a little bit of the landscape. Uh, forested lands along with those sawtooth mountains and boy it was nice and green. The Anafi is an amazing little camera platform. The 4K video on this is, uh, they, they, I, you just have to say they did a really good job. Now you'll notice upcoming right here the first bobble I saw. I was in sport mode with uh, uh, full pitch forward. And right there. Now I saw that bird go by so I don't know if that could have anything to, to do with it or not. Uh, but you'll see some more uh, little bobbles upcoming here. See, there's several bobbles there, and that was by with no stick input by me. Again, this is all in sport mode. You can see it was a pretty vast area to cover here, so you really needed to have it in sport mode uh, to cover some ground. Amazing scenery. Look at those mountains. And boy, lush and green. Now there, that was a big bobble, and you just, man, look at that. I, and that was, like I said, full pitch forward uh, in sport mode, so I'm not sure what that was about. And this uh, shot right here, of course, uh, the motorcycle so uh, we had to get a little picture of, uh, of the bikes and I see I got a good picture of the, uh, of the rest area there uh, but there's the motorcycles down there Boy, look at that, Bob. Holy That was while I was lifting the gimbal up, uh, so that was really something. It didn't seem like the, it was that windy, but, uh, but maybe it was that windy out there. It's a light little drone, so I suppose a gust of wind could do that. And, of course, we had to get a picture of uh, my neighbor and I on our bikes. Uh, his is a KTM 1190, and mine is an FJR 1300 Yamaha. And there, Now, this is interesting because this is just in return to home mode. And no stick input from me. It's automated mode. It's doing an RTH. And, boy, look at that thing bobble around. You think that was the wind doing that? I mean, it, I guess it had to be. It didn't seem like it was that windy, but boy, it, that, the drone was all over the place, that's for sure. And bring it in for a nice landing. This is the Anafi again uh, on July 21st in Arizona. Uh, just outside about oh, 13 miles or so outside of Tucson, Arizona, which is kind of the gateway to the Grand Canyon. Uh, but we're far enough out that uh, this is a, a legal place to fly. And uh, 
we pulled off the side of the road and we found Forest Service Road 320 and off in the distance what you see there is Red Butte Mountain so it looked like a good place to fly to so of course uh, with the Anafi it made sense to put it into sport mode uh, to cover more ground so this first part is pretty good this is just uh, really some nice uh, scenic video of the mountain uh, I kind of like showing how vast the western United States is uh, there's a lot of country to, uh, to cover here in the western US and so then here I did a pan just to kind of show the same thing you know, from the proverbial from sea to shining, shining sea uh, a lot of land and the, the mountains off in the distance. Uh, really some beautiful country there. So I'll let you take a look at this. That road in the foreground there is that uh, Forest Service Road 320. I can't remember what the highway number was there into Tucson. It's from uh, Williams, Arizona to uh, Tucson. Really a vast, beautiful country. So now we're in return to home mode and look at the drone wiggle around here. Now this was without me touching the controls. It was in RTH. Uh, and I, you know, it didn't seem like it was that windy. There was some wind, uh, but boy, evidently it caught hold of the drone and uh, really blew it around. Uh, so now, right upcoming here, uh, we'll bring it in for a landing. That's uh, where I parked the car. We just got a found a little uh, little spot right off the road there. Uh, somebody had had a fire pit there in the past. Looked like somebody used that for a camp spot. Okie dokie, so I formatted the SD card. We're ready to go. It's ready to fly. So I'm going to hit fly here on the uh, on the app. And that takes us into the app. We're at 4K 30 frames per second. We're in film mode right now, manual flight. And we'll throw it into uh, sport mode when we take off. But uh, I've got it on the ground here. Let me put the camera down so you can see it. Yeah, I'm sure you should be able to see that. And let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and take off. I'm hitting the uh, takeoff button on the uh, app itself. And it didn't take off. There we go. So there we go. Pick the camera back up here. Boy, I tell you, is this about the quietest drone you've ever seen? This thing, it's just a pleasure to fly. Let's bring, bring it in here, close to the camera, pick it up a little bit get it in front of the lens. Let's do a quick yaw around. I, there, there are very few uh, other drones that I would uh, that I would uh, dare uh, bring this uh, this this close to the uh, to the uh, uh, camera with. I mean this guy you know you can you can bring him right in and feel comfortable with it. Uh, so if you look uh, directly behind the drone there there's a little uh, food truck there uh, evidently I, as you guys know usually I park underneath that uh, that picnic shelter there but they're having a uh, Peruvian Independence Day festival and that's what that food truck is doing there and so they're setting some stuff up so we're gonna fly well away from that uh, I'm gonna turn around here and uh, and we're gonna get some altitude and we're gonna go up and away so uh, so let's uh, let's just go straight up and uh, see where we can go from here. Straight up. And what I always forget about this drone is that uh, when you're not in uh, in sport mode, it's not as fast. Or you know, if, if if that was the Mavic, that thing really would have taken off. So anyway. We're up about 20 meters. Let's get up there a ways. Let's get up about 40 meters or so. I want to get well up above everybody so we're not bothering anybody around here. 
as you can see we're just straight up we're only a couple meters distant 37 38 there's 40 meters so okay let's yaw it around get back looking at the park here and I'm gonna I'm gonna point the camera down here so you can see what they're doing here with that food truck and so you can see them down there that's their uh, that's where they're having the little uh, Peruvian Independence Day festival so I assume a, a lot more people will show up uh, for that but uh, probably some pretty good food I would expect uh, it's interesting you never know what you're gonna run into uh, but it's but that's what these parks are for and it's it's a great deal so so what I'm gonna do is I am going to change our direction here and uh, I'm gonna fly us out into the middle of the park so that we're not flying over the top of those folks and we'll get out uh, kind of in the middle of Heroes Park here this uh, the, the, the thing that I love about this Anafi is it's so the controls are just buttery smooth and, and I've talked about it before but I also really like that camera uh, the, the gimbal control uh, up and down on the gimbal with the it's got a little well, I'll point it up to the camera here this little paddle right here just makes it really easy to do it in a smooth way and then this button right here I'll hit it right now and you'll see it centers the camera uh, which is a handy thing to have so I'm gonna go back down rule of thirds we'll get about a third sky there so we dropped it down so I'm gonna go in from film mode into sport mode and I'm gonna go uh, full tilt forward uh, out towards it'd be the northwest there that field that I usually fly over and let's just see how this guy uh, handles it like I said there's there's virtually no wind today and so it, it is it appears to be pretty smooth I'm not seeing anything weird uh, let's get some altitude while we're at it yeah I get a little break up on FPV there maybe I need to be higher yeah we'll return home if connection is lost so yeah getting some pretty pretty bad breakup I'm pointed right towards the drone but uh, now that's me I think that did an inadvertent yaw there let's see if I can get a better connection and straighten it out okay we got past that spot I actually I probably should have been higher up we're gonna go even higher yet yeah I'm I'm, I'm losing FPV here guys I don't I don't know where I'm at for all I know uh, I'm gonna stop here for a second see if we get some control back we're 531 meters away Yeah, I got nothing on on uh, FPV. Although I am, I'm still getting telemetry, so looks like I'm still moving out. Yeah, so I just lost everything there. Lost it all. Uh, so you know what? Yeah, it says not connected. Well, let's hope it. Uh, <laughs> yeah so return to home just came up on the screen yeah so I can see the bird it's coming back yeah so I've actually got out that direction before and got further than that so so I don't know what that was about uh, but we definitely uh, we definitely lost some uh, uh, FPV and, and connection there I'm dropping the gimbal down here so you can see I'm standing under the shade of that tree that's kind of behind my red Dodge Durango there it's almost directly over us so it's coming down let's stop return to home so I stopped that let's pick up the, the uh, camera again so it's good uh, I, I love it when those safety systems come into play and the, and the drone uh, came back on its own 
I've flown out that same direction before and I've got clear to the end of that field so I don't know what the issue was today yeah strong interference of course I'm directly above us right now so that's probably what's going on there on a Wi-Fi drone when it's when it's directly above you you can have difficulty and there it's not even that hot and my phone is starting to dim here it's a problem with the iPhone is it really uh, it, it, it's not good in hot weather yeah so I'm already getting breakup on on FPV going out that same direction we were before yeah very strong interference it says I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the pedal to the metal and let's see if we can get past it I've actually I've had interference there before and I've been able to get past it so yeah looks like we did that this time and we're at 64 meters in height yeah but we're starting to get more interference again I don't know maybe we'll get past it this time but we're in sport mode and it's performing fine so it kind of tells me that some of the issues I was having were because of the wind let's take it out let's see if we can get it out one kilometer or so oh there we lost everything yeah <coughs> I've been out further than that in this very spot before but I've also so so I, I suspect it's because we're in an urban environment I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit return to home there's no point in, in pushing it too hard and let's see how it does so so I've had issues on return to home where I've seen the drone jig a little bit back and forth so and we have some aircraft in the air they are far away from where I'm at so so we're good but I always like to make sure I see them and know where they're at yeah that guy is way higher than me and the drone is uh, coming back at about 10 meters a second well I'm disappointed in the display on my iPhone it uh, as soon as it heats up a little bit it dims and it makes it really difficult to fly okay we're good we're back over the park I'm gonna stop return to home and uh, we're gonna straighten this guy out pick up the gimbal a little bit and I'm gonna go full throttle forward and and jig it around a little bit and let's see see what happens yeah so I'm going all left all right at full throttle and it's doing just fine so so let's let's do a hard yaw here Yeah, guys, it's, it's telling me that my problems, uh, I think, were really all virtually all wind related. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna drop some altitude, full throttle again, and I'm gonna yaw to the left, yaw to the right. We're at, we're at full forward stick, full forward pitch. And we're in sport mode and it's doing just fine. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that. So what it's telling me is that, you know, high winds are going to be an issue with this, with this drone. So, so if you got a lot of wind, uh, you know, don't expect uh, sport mode to be your friend. Although when you're in film mode, it'll do pretty good. Uh, so yeah. I think I think I kind of confirmed that 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 seems to be the issue. So let's uh, let's drop it down here a little and come on in. I'm going to drop the gimbal down as we come forward.
like I said, I'm standing under that tree by the light pole there, uh, just the other side of my red Dodge Durango. There, you can see me there. Let's uh, let's see if we can do. Uh, let's go into some of the flight modes here while we still have some battery. Uh, do, do, do. Manual flight, cameraman, follow me. Let's look at cine shots. Yeah, let's let's do a let's do a spiral and see what we can do there. So I think what I need to do is so I need to pick one. Okay. Yeah, so it drops the camera all the way down. I think what it does is it gradually raises the uh, raises the gimbal then. So the gimbal is pointed straight down. Boy, if that doesn't make you dizzy, I don't know what will. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. So then it slowly raises it up. We'll try that again. That's actually kind of cool. Yeah, we're down to 30% battery. It's going to want us to bring it in here. Uh, let's try a reveal. Yeah, I'm going to say we had it uh, just high enough for this one because it's just going to clear those trees. Okay, we are down to 23% battery. Let's bring her home. Okay, so let's see how close it lands here. I'm going to let it land on the, uh, on the ground. Should land right in front of us here. Let's see how accurate it is. Oh, it's it's doing pretty good. It got a little bit close to the tree and was going to land right on top of our camera here. So uh, one of the cool things about uh, about this drone is that it stops video as soon as it lands uh, so that you don't ever end up with a, a, a file that's not closed out in a corrupted file. We landed with 15% battery so that's pretty good. I think we had a pretty good flight there. Uh, let me shut it down and we'll do a conclusion. Okay guys, I'm standing in the uh, shade here for my own comfort. Uh, I know the lighting probably isn't quite as good. And we're in a public park, so there's going to be cars going by and so forth. Uh, but we had a successful flight with the uh, with the Parrot and uh, you, you you saw the video uh, in over by Stanley, Idaho, off of uh, uh, the Vader rest stop there uh, of the of the Sawtooths, and you saw it jigging around a little bit. 
you've already seen the footage that I had when I had this thing out by the Red Rocks in Las Vegas where man it was really getting blown around uh, and then the footage uh, uh, just uh, out there uh, about 13 miles out of uh, Tucson uh, where it was getting blown around a little bit there too and I, I didn't think the wind was that strong but evidently it must have been because as you saw here today I really tried hard to jig it around and see if I could get some inadvertent movements when I was in sport mode and it did just fine and there's no wind today so that tells me that it's wind related so uh, you know I was considering on on sending this back thinking that maybe I had a bad one but but I think this experience has proved to me that that is not the case uh, that uh, it is not a bad one it is uh, it's just wind related so you know this probably just is not a drone that you're gonna want to fly if there's much wind or if you do uh, you're gonna want to do it with uh, yeah so that noise just so you can show that noise behind me is a, a kid banging his bat around but uh, but that's cool it's a public park right that's what it's for uh, but you're probably curious so I just wanted you to see what that was it's kind of funny they they see me filming and you know let's make a little noise uh, but uh, but that's cool like I said it's a public park so so that's how it is uh, but anyway the Anafi uh, I, I think as you can see from the footage it's just got a phenomenal camera on it the 4k footage off of this thing is just amazing and and uh, the, the app is amazing the controls are amazing uh, yeah, I'm sticking with this one. I'm gonna. I'm got. I'm not gonna send it back. I'm gonna hang on to this guy, and just understand that if you're in the wind, you need to put it in film mode. And it's no, it's not gonna go very fast. But that's how you're gonna get your steady footage. Uh, so, gosh, I guess that's about it. Uh, this is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, subscribe to my channel, please. I'd appreciate it. And most of all. I want you to know, I really appreciate that you look at these videos, and hey, we'll see you on the next one.